How's guys? What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Tech Scene ZA. Today, we're in a very special location. We are in the undisclosed location of Limitless Tech. <laughs> secret. <laughs> yeah, the top secret warehouse of Limitless Tech. So today we have Donny with here. Uh, Donny with us here today. I mean, you guys know Donny. He's always been around for our content, in our content. And what we're chatting about today is Apple or no Apple. <laughs> So, Donny, for a while now, you've been um, you've been preaching that Apple is the way to go for creators. Um, you care to elaborate? Hey, that's a horrible thing to hear somebody say that I've been preaching Apple is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for me, because like you know, I'm a I love Windows. I am a hundred percent PC lover. Yeah. You know, um, it is only this year of the all the days of my life that I have like actually. You know, I've gotten to a point now where with experimenting over so many years and being so used to the PC infrastructure that I decided like, so I'm anti-Apple firstly. Okay. And I'm anti-Apple because of the way that it controls the, I would say, your access to certain things, right? And yeah. there's certain limitations obviously that Apple has, right? Um, so I'm very much an Android user and very much a PC user and I love the way the two integrate. Yeah. But there's two things that Apple does extremely well, and as a result, and based on obviously wanting to give people good advice and the best advice, I'm saying that right now, value for money, what you spend on an Apple product, and in your case, what you've just spent on this brand new <laughs> MacBook Air from Limitless Tech, thank you for your support again. It's always a pleasure. And so I'm saying to the market that, and to content creators that for 20 grand, I can't build you a PC that's going to give you this kind of editing capability. But bearing in mind, this is not a gaming machine, so it's yes. not going to serve dual purposes. It's not, with a 13-inch screen, it's, it's not the most practical to some people. It's not what you can do your accounting on. Yeah. But as an editing tool, and if you're willing to work around its limitations, which is obviously the screen, so plugging up an external monitor, having to now go and buy an, an, an additional... Type C to uh, or Thunderbolt to what's it called an HDMI? Yeah. I mean, that, I mean Apple two USB ports. <laughs> I, I could complain a lot about this thing, right? But the problem is that that's not going to serve me in terms of what I want to do. I want to edit video fast. This is the solution. And do you think one of the contributions that's pushing Apple ahead? for content creators is the introduction of the M1 chip? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, this was not an, not an option uh, at all prior because at, you know, at some point uh, they were using Intel processors too. Yes. Um, and yes, the, the, the operating system is known to be very stable and the way that it handles video and all of that. But the thing is now that we've understand is that codecs are actually built into the CPU. And as a result, Apple sort of pulled away in, in terms of the market when they introduced this M1 processor which actually has codecs built into the way that it, it works with video. Yes. Um, and as you know, it, with the higher bit rate that we're trying to work with now, this doesn't apply to somebody shooting on their phone. I'm talking about people using actual cameras yeah. and are looking to push out 4K quality, 100 megabits per second files, you know, sometimes shooting 10 bit raw, three, three to 600 megabit files, you know, and wanting to be able to at least handle that. Now my PC can barely handle uh, a 4K 100 megabits per second file. And as soon as I start to load that timeline up on, the PC starts to slow down. And sometimes while you're editing, it crashes and then you're sitting with a situation where you're now you know, losing your work. Yeah. Whereas this, it's unbelievable with such less RAM um, that it's able, to, it's able to, to handle the kind of workload that it does. But that's because it, its architecture is completely different to how a PC works yeah. in the sense that the memory is unified. So it can actually use the hard drive together with the RAM and actually change between it quite easily. In fact, I believe that the hard drive in this is, is really, really fast. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why, I mean, we know SSDs have changed our lives on PCs. Um, so on this kind of a machine, it's just something it's given else. App, uh, or it's given Apple the upper hand. Yeah, yeah. But also, they, they are, look, there are some tricks. With the Apple range, you've got to be very careful. Uh, I definitely don't recommend the base models. 
uh, especially the 256 gig model. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is that Apple's put one 256 gig chip on, on the board and based on the unified memory structure and how it utilizes the memory, the 512 model actually performs much better because there's actually two physical chips. Okay. So for some reason, the 512 does a lot better in, in video editing especially yeah. compared to the 256 gig model. So I would say when you're purchasing your Apple product, you need to be aware of what are some of the limitations. Like I wouldn't go out and buy an M2 base model. I'd rather buy a 512 8 gig uh, M1. M1. There's actually more performance for video editors yeah. in that way. Well, you've heard it here first. Tech scene's now gone Apple. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations and well done. I mean, uh, you guys are welcome to put up any questions on there. But yeah, if you're asking me like what kind of PC I, I've been working with, I've built everything up to a 5950X in terms of AMD. And I tried AMD obviously because I was curious to see what the yeah. capability is. And don't get me wrong, it's super fast. But I had to build a 50 grand PC to be able to get the, the performance, sort of that, performance that I feel that this is giving me. But bearing in mind, I can go and play Warzone at uh, 150 to 200 frames per second on that, on that yeah. 50 grand PC. Whereas you can't do this. Whereas you can't do this. So, guys, you know, it's like important to put things into perspective. I'm saying that if you're a video editor on a tight budget, 20 grand to spend, this is the way to go. I wouldn't say that's a tight budget. <laughs> well, in terms of, I mean, you're not going to, a 20 grand PC is not going to give you this kind of performance. Yeah, true. You know, I mean, a graphics card, just to process your video, you're looking at eight and a half grand minimum, and that's not even a, it's not even an RTX 3060 or 3070 maybe, yeah. you know? So, yeah. So, you've heard it here first. And, Tony, you know what? Thank you so much for joining me, although I am joining you in your <laughs> yeah, home. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't say it's his home. I said that's, <laughs> this is the Limitless Tech Secret Warehouse. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for giving us so much of insight into what some of our creators should be doing and it's always a, uh, a pleasure supporting Limitless Tech and supporting the dream of yours in whatever we do. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Congratulations and give us more content please. <laughs> Done. Yeah.